to week two of technical writing. Today we're going to talk about the second assignment, technical instruction sets. And before we begin, I just want to comment that we have a really good textbook chapter on instruction sets for our readings this week, and several good instruction set student examples throughout these two weeks. So give yourself some time to review these student examples and carefully read the chapter from the Anderson textbook. Instruction sets are one of the most common technical documents that technical writers create. You've probably used them in other classes to do your labs, and most textbooks include them. And often they are ineffective and poorly written. So in this unit, we're going to try to fix that so you don't put out bad instruction sets in the future. The first question you need to ask yourselves for this unit is what the topic of your instruction set is going to be. This is up to you, but I have a couple criteria you need to follow to make sure your assignment turns out well. First, you need to make sure that you are choosing an actual technical topic. So that means you need to choose a topic in which you are using some kind of tool or technology to complete a technical task. Good topics in the past have included how to build a model rocket, how to test a rocket engine, how to take a soil sample, how to model a cube in AutoCAD, and bad topics are ones like how to bake a cake, how to read a book, how to make a pulled pork sandwich. These aren't technical enough, and we can talk about the nuances of the term technical, so if you get feedback from me after you've posted your topic on the discussion forum, where I ask you to discuss your topic a little bit further, it's probably because I wanna see what the technical aspect of it is so you could uh, discuss that with me and I could make sure that you're on the right track and have selected an effective topic. Second, you wanna make sure that your topic is accessible. By accessible, I mean that you have access to all the equipment you need to do in this task because you are going to have to photograph each stage. If you decide to do a model of something in CAD, for example, do you have access to CAD? And this brings me to my next point, which is that the task that you are writing instruction sets for has to be something that's photograph photographable. Good instruction sets rely on images for every single stage, so you need to make sure you can get good images. Even for computer programs, you'll need to take good screen captures. Finally, you want to make sure your topic is of the right length for this assignment. In each class I've taught, I've had one or two students not think about this before they start and choose a topic that ends up being 20 pages long. You want your instruction sets to be completable in about 6 to 10 pages. And even 6 to 10 pages might sound long for some of you, but it really isn't when you consider how many images you're going to include and how much white space instruction sets evolve, involve. Okay, so before we look at instruction sets, I wanna go over a few key points about technical documents and technical writing more generally. First, one of the key differences between technical, write, technical documents and other writing you might do is the user of your document. That is, in technical documents from lab reports to instruction sets, your reader is usually going to use your document in order to accomplish something or in order to do something. In this instruction set, you will have to create a user persona. Why is it important to know who your user is when you create an instruction set? Well, consider this question. How might a, how might a set of instructions change for showing your father how to change a tire than teaching your 12-year-old sister how to change a tire? Why do these instructions differ? Similarly, how might a set of instructions that you leave in the glove compartment of your car differ from a set of instructions that you find online for changing a tire? What might those differences be between those two sets of instructions? You might want to think about the best way to get information across to a certain age group, certain learning style, 
a scenario of use, the emotional context of the situation. Second, when you're considering goals, um, think of the instruction sets for changing a tire as an example. The goal for this type of instruction set might sound simple, but depending on the user and the situation, a tire change manual might have different goals attached to it. So you might have a primary set of goals for a specific user, but then you might also have secondary goals or tertiary goals. For instance, I might want to know if I need to change my tire after a certain number of mileage or I might have a tire that looks funky, so I might want to know what a bald tire looks like. Or I might want to know where to buy a new tire and advice on what to spend money on. I might be on the side of the road and it might be an emergency situation, so I need quick tips on spare tires and how to change a tire quickly. I might want to know just one part of changing a tire and need to skip to step number five. So the set of instructions needs to be scannable. So for instruction sets, you wanna think about multiple goals and set up a nice scannable document that allows for dual stream reading or think about this acronym RAM, Random Access Memory, which is that idea of dual stream reading where the instruction sets has a primary set of goals for your user, but you're also thinking about other users' needs and what secondary or tertiary goals you have in mind for your particular set of instructions. Number three, stakeholders. Beyond users, who else has a stake in you being successful at the document you are creating? Um, generally, technical documents have stakeholders. That is, someone is paying you to write this document so for instance, if a company is paying me to write the document, I might have to advertise for the company a little bit. So let's say that I need to include a type of tire that Goodyear sells and what type I recommend as a spare and what type is best for which type of car. I might even have to claim that the best type of tire to use is their more expensive tire because they want to sell a whole lot of those expensive tires. So whenever you're designing a set of instructions, keep your stakeholders in mind. Number four, KPIs or key performance indicators. Technical documents usually have KPIs and that is how I know that my document has been successful. In instruction sets, that usually is that the user can easily make it through the document, but it might also be that the instruction set needs to meet a certain page length, a number of units need to be sold after the instruction set is distributed. For our purposes, our key performance indicator is that your user is able to perform the task um, easily so they can get through the set of instructions and that you meet the page requirement that I've explicitly asked you to meet. Number five, SMEs or subject matter experts. Um, you are going to be required to include subject matter experts in your in, for this unit. So in real technical writing, technical writers interview subject matter experts who are really good at the thing they're writing about. So to create a tire change manual, I might conduct um, extensive internet research about changing tires, but I would also make sure I interviewed several types of mechanics from small shops to dealerships to tire change places. In this assignment, you're going to have to ask a subject matter expert that knows something about the process you're writing about to review your instructions. And I'm using the concept subject matter experts loosely here. So for your purposes, you might ask a friend, a family member, an instructor, really anyone who knows anything about your topic to be your subject matter expert. And finally, textual tests. 
Most technical documents and writing involves tests. I'm not making you test your document with an actual user, but ideally, if I was really writing this document for a company, I would run a usability test with multiple types of users, asking a mechanic, a teenager, a mom, an elderly man, all to, all to attempt to follow the instructions. And then based on my observations, I would make revisions on the instruction set and also based on the feedback that I get from these users, I would be able to revise my instruction set accordingly. Okay, so the next slide that follows are the steps that I require that you include in your, I'm sorry, not the steps. The next slide that follows are going to be the parts that your instruction set should include. And I'm going to end this video right here and the next one that continues will be uh, an extensive explanation about these five formal parts that you need to include in your instruction set. So please listen to the next video for my explanation about these formal parts.